Okay. Um, today we are talking about the government and its services. This is not a chapter in the book, although it's probably talks about in different places, but it is just a separate unit. And uh, these slides are on um, our web page um, for IBE 360, and also we have other documents in this um, uh, topic on the web page. And then, you know, I'll probably add a couple more because I found some documents that they to make it, to make a couple points and then we'll do it. Nice to um, have updates on the web page. Um, I also gave this lecture last week to the business class because I was filling in some lectures for them. And I found out that the recording didn't work um, uh, at that time, again. <laughs> so two, two of the chapters worked that I gave the lecture for, but this, this chapter didn't work. So I'm recording it again, and then I'll make a suggestion to the LOGT reverse five process. They can also use this lecture because it's the same, same notes there. Okay, um, I made up this slide that last year, so it's uh, pretty much the same. Uh, first of all, what is the government? Um, if, you, if you think about government, it's uh, similar, um, well, it's public services. And you can think about well, what are the differences between a private business and government. Uh, if, if a business is thinking about strategies, they might think about new products and services, and businesses are thinking about serving customers, and they're thinking about um, <coughs> operating efficiently to lower costs. Uh, the government is a public in the public service sector, and they're also thinking about um, reducing costs, and operating efficiently, providing better services, and even though you might say they're not in the business of creating new services, in a sense they are, because um, by creating the new, like the, the public services in a new way, uh, they are creating new services, but they're also becoming, they're creating services that better serve the public. So you have um, a, a big move in Europe and in Norway and in various other countries to move services uh, that was traditional from a traditional way of um, delivery to physical services. And um, okay, so uh, what we want to do here is just talk about what is uh, the e government, what are the uh, sectors of e government, and what do we mean by the progression of e government services, and then talk about what's going on in Norway uh, today. Okay, so, um, uh, so some of the points of e government is the uh, exchange and delivery of information and others are um, through the delivery of uh, services to go beyond delivery of information. Mm -hmm. um, in 2003, I always started to think about the new services, and um, community administrations were taking a more holistic view of these services, and uh, they were starting to adopt these services at the community to the national level. At that point, the um, <coughs> provider um, of came was started up in 2003, and uh, they would later become an infrastructure provider for e services in Norway. <coughs> but they were just getting started at the time. There were different kinds of experiments going on in government, uh, having uh, electronic elections uh, take place in some communities and uh, any test cases. And uh, there was a e-democracy e web portal that was uh, set up uh, also to go along with the elections. 
So in uh, 2000, um, I guess the first, um, this was set up in 2003, and then um, uh, they want to increase the election participation for uh, teenagers in the 2007 uh, municipality election. As I was um, part of an evaluation team to look at the implementation of a new democracy web portal in Molde, uh, which is called BMO, which they mentioned here, and that was around like 2005, from, from around that time. It was meant to be a place where citizens could go online and talk about their issues that might be interested in, meet politicians. Uh, from the parties and hear what they have to say about the parties, and uh, but it, it never really took off. <coughs> uh, the portal, um, uh, regardless, they used to software by so in the Ergo group, but uh, the problem was not made basically software, but it was uh, the way it was the incentive for people to use the system. So the politicians signed up for the system. On one day, and they posted some information about their parties, and then there was no real debate that went on on the system. And the, the, um, there was like no incentive for the citizens to come and talk on this electronic forum. Uh, the reason they, they, um, we we think that it wasn't used was because even if the debate took place on the forum, there was no way to. Uh, funnel the decisions of that forum back into real government decisions. If it didn't have to do with the planning board meetings or any type of community uh, meetings. So it was, there was kind of a dead end for discussion. So, so many times when people talk about in government, they think about these categories of government to citizen, Government to business, government to government, and government to employer. And these are some of the sectors we'll talk about. But uh, also, there's the citizen to citizen category, which is e democracy. And uh, some people think there still needs to be a forum or a place where citizens can talk with each other. Mm. I'll show you the um, uh, Molde Community website. And there is ways to, for citizens to talk to the government. But there still isn't any kind of portal for citizens to citizens, or maybe that's kind of outside of the, um, and outside of maybe government interest that's outside of government, and that uh, citizens can talk to each other in many different types of social media. So maybe it's not considered as a, a top priority in some sense. Um, this was. Also, from a uh, uh, discussion about what is e democracy. Uh, e democracy is <coughs> um, when you have citizens' participation as the conception of the terms of normal of e government. So, I uh, was talking about um, this was a research and a PhD done by uh, Sidney Buck Jacob, and she looked at uh, Democracy. Um, so there's differences between the government and citizens' perspective on things, and that there is usually a need for a place where people can discuss um, their concerns. Okay, um, so I mean, maybe this. Yeah, I'll go back to that at some point. But we'll talk more about the traditional categories of uh, e government. We have uh, government to citizens category, and this is um, allows citizens to better communicate with the government, whether it be at the local level or at the county level, or at the national level. And the idea is that uh, citizens should be able to find information on the web or um, I don't know, yes, on the web and to be able to ask questions and receive answers and be able to do services like pay bills or receive uh, 
documents and payments. So electronic uh, funds transfer. And the government services may be able to also uh, share information, conduct training, help find employment, uh, and uh, electronic benefit transfer. So I mean, like, if you have a system for financial aid or food benefits or tax benefits, uh, this is to be able to be done electronically. And in that way, make sure the people that are supposed to get the money get the uh, money. Um, government to business and business to government has to use the concept of deep procurement. We talked about this in a uh, previous uh, week. We talked about electronic transfers, uh, being able to order materials that have to do with the support of a primary service. So the government will have to provide a primary service to citizens, but they still are being um, the buyer of materials in order to do this. And so if they can conduct some of their purchasing electronically, then they have to go and save money for the way the government operates. And they may also use the system for the vote for the system. Now the government, the government category would be being able to share Information between agencies uh, using um, the databases or registries for um, maybe different types of um, things like like um, property databases for property databases for health services databases for um, the um, municipality investments and being able to share this information and translate between government agencies. And then government employees being able to communicate with people that actually work for the government, work from all the community, work for the city to So the basic uh, progression of the government, and this is also sometimes associated with the digitalization of government, but um, it's Going from being able to publish information, uh, allowing for two-way transactions, and that could be chat, for example, uh, multi-purpose portals, and uh, being able to provide different types of services on the same uh, interface, uh, portal personalization uh, in around uh, 2003-2005, also with the concept of my means be there, my site was uh, introduced, and this has uh, since um, been integrated into the new um, digital system. Uh, and then we have, um, so that means that the individuals, when they log in, they get an interface that's relevant for them, so they get access to the right agencies and the right um, personal information. And then clustering of common services, Having both, um, uh, where this might be a, a integration for one person or vertical integration, question of common services would be more of a horizontal integration of services so that you can um, get access from different departments, for example. But if you're building a house, going from one department to another, and then full enterprise transformation is more like a uh, blurring of boundaries between the uh, services. So this is also expressed in more detail here. We have uh, stage one, information publishing and dissemination. Uh, so you have information about um, maybe the government department, saying your services and contact information. Uh, it's just a two-way transaction, allowing the submission of forms and being able to conduct monetary transactions. Um, and the customers mm -hmm. must be sure that they have you know, privacy and security of their information. Uh, stage three is the um, multi purpose portal. And we have 
customer and I sent the government and had to do the deliveries we had and um, being able to do cross-site monetary transactions and also be able to exchange information. <coughs> Access to government managed centralized databases. Okay, so you have different links to different types of services. Portal personalization. Uh, the customers can see what they think is relevant for them. So they can maybe select the links that are relevant or be provided automatically with those links and being able to um, um, being able to say what their preferences are for the electronic services. Question of common services. Um, customers see unified packets instead of separate services, and um, there's allowing for transfer of information between different types of registries. Uh, recognition of groups of transactions instead of groups of agencies. And then the full integration is the um, uh, full service center where you can really notice the difference between the agencies if you get a unified service. And the way um, the government is trying to operate now in Norway is they at least uh, state five and are trying to achieve safety. This is a website. Uh, uh, it's the adding of an old government of an old and uh, it is sort of an information portal and it describes up some documents um, that I will refer to. Uh, I got this document, it's called the uh, Design in Public Sector Services, Norwegian Government Program. It was published in 2012 and it's uh, outlines the strategy for the government in terms of uh, forming the government from uh, traditional services to new government services to digital services in the next uh, coming years. And they've already made a lot of progress on this so far. I just want to show some <coughs> websites that this comes and just pause the video for a second. So this is all on this um, in February 18th. It has the various documents that you start to make a reading from. And this is the sort of digitizing the public sector services with this document here, and we can use it program. And then these are some older um, sites that, that I provided in 2005. And it shows you kind of the historical perspective of this. So before we get to this, they were I just want to show some government sites. Okay, so first of all, we used to have a site called um, Green Stable, but that has been phased out. And I used to log into there and be able to get um, my taxes through that website and be able to get it. But that's been phased out, and now that they used to go to Norgel.no, the way that we need it. And um, here, is the service portal, you could say, and uh, it has information about different sectors, how uh, work, uh, children and family, property, um, um, user questions, um, health, individual, and the different systems, and how to change it. So it's very nice, you can use it as well. Uh, you can log in 
and you can get that to in your personal portal. And uh, you can also access the file stream something like um, I get the access to the portal. So if I, this is the uh, text agency, and if I need to order a text you know, card, um, I go here. I know I can't log in because I don't have much text with me, but I can log in. <laughs> and this is what I really used to log in to do the text. So you had it kind of, this is again, this is integrated services. If I want to get a bank ID, I can get a bank ID too. So the thing, I'm getting a bank ID. I have a bank ID. I can see. I'll just change the bank ID. So uh, we're going to, I guess, we're going to talk about the bank IDs in a moment. Uh, but um, um, you can use this also to um, be able to uh, pay for things with government. So to use your bank ID to certify your identity in the physical world, to use a bill from pen, to use an electronic world, to use the bank ID. And, um, You can get it on your mobile. So it provides a personal certificate for the banking. So, like, if the government wants to um, do transactions, you need to do banking transactions. Okay, then also, uh, so there's lots of services, integrated services at the national level. They also look at the community level. You see that um, even at the community level, that Smolder has un undergone a, um, a transformation of its website so that it's uh, very uh, friendly. You can talk with the government, government to citizen. You can find somebody with access to services, can find jobs. And um, this is not the same as uh, the web portal where citizens talk to citizens, but you can talk to the government in this way. So I can also change this to English, and I know some of things about the language is very convenient, but uh, the website is accessible um, in different languages. I just can wait to get the first eight languages in. And um, um, I just look at this for a second, politics and democracy. Probably uh, more useful than that. Uh, it shows a meetings calendar for when things are happening so that there is an integration between uh, the information that people see and the actual operation of government. So there's a meeting calendar, there's hearings, um, there's also a place somewhere, and I'll just keep it. Yeah, if you have an idea, you can make a contribution. Mm -hmm. uh, hearing. So there's the information about public hearing. And, um, there, but there doesn't seem to be, as far as I can see, um, and there's, there was like on some Facebook account. I don't see any place where there's like a discussion going on one. And I could be that I'm just missing it. Uh, but I don't see. Uh, like here, this one, this is a, I think this is a, a for, for teenagers. Uh, 
abuse that they can have. They have some sort of disorder. And there may be a discussion going here somewhere. Um, and then the new thing about this is that uh, the websites say automatically translate websites. So I guess they go through some sort of a conversion and then automatically translate these services in uh, English. But normally it would come up in Norwegian unless you request it in English. <laughs> so I think I have to initiate it in that way. <laughs> But um, I don't see um, yeah. I don't see actually like this place where people log in and they chat with each other. So that's what I'm not going to find. But it might be some community place. But anyway, um, Moses Nina has really um, done a renovation of their website. And they have a lot of different services. <coughs> they use an example on the local level, so housing and property, and then choosing a doctor and so forth. Um, and then I think there's also a place where you can do payments online as well. Um, so, um, yeah, so I think uh, both at the national and at the local level, there has been transformation of physical services. And then also we have the transition. Uh, and probably this has not so much on this great transformation as the other um, website. For some reason, I don't know why. Uh, but at the future, they have more of the, like an older generation website. And, um, uh, maybe it could be a little bit still services, like uh, the cities to cover for new census. And then they seem to be stuck with the environment. Um, and it has to do with the um, you know, both sports and culture. And they have a, you know, they have a strategic plan, but somehow uh, maybe responsible for providing information documents. And um, different types of training programs, and access into the uh, school system. But then, like if you want to see the school system, this is also something you would do through registering through the central registry. And then you would get access to the districts or the counties or the towns that are relevant for you through the national portal. So it's not necessary to come to this site. Uh, to get that type of training. Okay. So let's uh, go back to the main uh, slide. So, how has this uh, transformation come about? It seems to have um, been like a policy change that was uh, expressed in this uh, 2012 document about the government strategy for transforming the public sector into a digital public sector. And the main areas that they were looking at is um, the public sector is to provide unified and user friendly digital services. Point being that they should do better services for citizens and business and more efficient use of public resources. So, this is what we're talking about. The strategy of the government is to provide better services and to operate more efficiently. Um, and the way that you would do this is you would need to have a, a simple and secure login for, you, for citizens and for businesses. Uh, it should have secure digital mailboxes. Uh, the citizens should be notified by SMS or text messages and emails. And uh, we should be able to get assistance for citizens in using digital services. Uh, development of ICT solutions uh, that uh, 
technology is to be viewed in the context of the public sector work processes and organizations. So the government has those sort of processes, which are called processes for instance. As using of uh, protection of privacy information and digitization measures for uh, and federal services to be coordinated so the need for each of services. And this looks at the, the future of digital services and that there's a lot of different areas and we saw these areas on the, on the website, uh, at least in Moldy's Newness, for example, but also you would have seen this on the uh, Norge Bagano website, just what is adequately. <coughs> so we have a uh, tax and digital important area and uh, work, welfare, uh, health and care, culture and leisure time, school and education, building and property, forward traffic. And the, um, this, all of these services are built on an infrastructure, an ICT infrastructure, where you have some common technical solutions that all of the services will use the common technical solution. And then we have the EID, uh, digital mailbox, uh, contact information, all seen as, a, as an infrastructure service provider, and then the public common register, the databases. And then we have management organization and financing of common ICT components. So the management of these services should have to be um, a common component. And then the, the accommodation, accommodate regulations to digital administration. So the regulations for these services will also be in common. The way a service is run in the tax area will be probably the same kinds of regulations as a service in the tax area, for example. All under the same kind of regu regulations. So this uh, slide is the expected real return for the government pension funds, uh, pension fund global and pension cost from the national insurance scheme. And it shows um, percentage of trend GNP for the Norwegian mainland. And this is 2005, and this is 2055. And the expected uh, funds return for the pension fund is going to be going down in time. It's fairly high now, and it will increase around 2020 to 2025. And then uh, as time goes by, the uh, amount in the fund will go down. And what we see is that um, the age and the disability of all uh, these people will go up. So you have um, more people requiring public services and less funds in public services. So that means that there is a need to operate government more efficiently. The way we uh, operate, uh, we, am, we provide services to individual citizens uh, and to have different costs. And if we address someone in person, uh, in the Copen city of Copenhagen, they calculated that it would be 80 kilometers per, uh, in person. And then if we address the question on the telephone, it would be 40 kilometers. And if it was if the citizen access the service did stream to themselves, free from it. So governments can save a lot of money by having uh, the citizens help themselves as much as possible. We see digitalization of services in many industries, like, for example, we're checking the stuff from the, from the uh, flights for airlines, just one example. And similarly, if we can do more of those, Government help to save money. Uh, there's a need for coordination between public sectors because many state services are digitized, so many major services still remain. We see that these are the uh, 15 uh, state services that have the most uses, except for health services. And we have customs declaration, tax cards, electronic support, tax, tax return. Supporting employment, registering, supporting tax action value. And these are non digitized services on the grade. There's property reports and fixed pay. We have the age 
uh, pension and the children benefits tax qualification health care exemption card and then changing family doctor notification leave uh, European health insurance and um, the ones that are not uh, digitized this is kind of expanded and things like uh, property registration um, and different types of support for unemployment and so forth. So um, there's been a lot of progress in the services that I've covered this year from the new 2000 and this was in 2011 specifically. Uh, the, the objective of the government, the, the public sector is, is to be accessible online to the extent possible, and web based services are to be the general rule. And a, a digital public sector is to be the result, result in improved services, and digitalization of the public services shall be free, be free of resources for other areas. So the idea is that <coughs> citizens interact with the government. Should be by default a digital interaction. And then by doing this digital interaction, that the government will provide better services to the citizen and that they will also create resources for other things where they need it. So, once again, the, the principles of the government program are that. Um, the digital communication is the rule of the thumb. That means it's by default it's digital, and it's all of self, and it can be person to person, but mostly digital. And then they, um, it should be user friendly. There should be a uh, login that's simple and secure. You get a public, uh, you get a private uh, mailbox to citizens in the public sector. Uh, the citizens get communicated with by text messages or emails to get the help where you need it. And then uh, the, the um, this is again what we said before, the, the work processes or uh, solutions are developed for the public sector work processes, it addresses privacy and insecurity, and that there's, um, there's a measure of relevance for special services. And this has to do with measuring the quality of services. So there's some sort of measure of quality. And if we look at this, for example, expanding on the point of login, and I'll see public online services to be um, and secure. And I'm just looking at the They started talking about the three conditions for the digital public sector. Um, in order for this to work, we, we had this uh, this common component at the bottom. And one of the things, one of the common components was an electronic ID, and that um, OPIN would become also uh, the common technical platform for digital services, and that the, all of the citizens would get a digital mailbox. So these are all the, the common uh, components. And then there would be common public registries, uh, databases, and then common uh, safeguards. So, um, using the same type of uh, gateways and secure IDs. And then, the, so if you get an EID on one service, you can be used on another service as well. And then the, the state infrastructure should be robust and secure, and there should be legislation that backs up this sector. And digital reuse of registered information. So if you have a password that are registered, you have this that information can be used for another another agency. So when they talk about security, um, the way this will work is that you have use of these common components, the common management, and the common regulations. And um, As such common solutions are referred to as common components, and uh, the important common components um, include registers of information on people, properties, and businesses. 
So the National Population Register is a, is a database for health uh, individuals. The Land Register uh, includes registration of property. And then the Central Coordinating Register for legal issues. So these are just these are different databases that uh, should be accessible and, and be able to transfer information between them. And then OPEN will provide the infrastructure of electronic IDs and that um, the users will benefit from the common components by being able to log in and then get the uh, access to all of these services through this one digital model. Uh, the common components can be put about in more specifically. The electronic ID allows for secure login to suitable services. And then the citizens are to use the same login uh, regardless of what public service they're accessing. And then a common technical platform, the ID Gateway, is designed to make the citizens use a range of different EIDs for uh, login to the online service. And before we have the other community ID, my ID, and that's the public EID solution. And it has a level three security as used by most people as for um, logging into and getting your tax information and committing a tax form. And you get PIN codes, and these PIN codes are sent to you by either mail or by SMS messages. And then um, you can also have it mailed to you. And it provides access to state level, which is national level services, or multiple or municipality services. And we saw this um, uh, on the site, uh, know you better know, and you see these different types of services. And if you go to the login, you can log into your new ID, and you can get to those services. Um, and then the digital service is provided by the Norwegian State Education and Fund, they're also accessible. We saw there was a tab for education and the electronic application for first secondary school. And this was, um, even though it was listed on the field or the county uh, website, we see that you access to access it through this centralized uh, portal. And access to services with sensitive personal data, which requires signature. Uh, would require an EID less higher level security at level four. And so these also can be issued to persons that they require a signature. Um, and then it says the government will provide EIDs from other suppliers in addition to the current ones in connection with public online services. The government also intends to establish a national ID card with a high security level and uh, and to identify, to identify electronic identity to be issued to public authorities. And that, that kind of EID that would be um, issued to public authorities could be used in um, um, the national ID card is to be, to be used for like a traveling within the Canyon area, like as a substitute for passport. And, um, and then there would also be an ID gateway uh, that would include electronic signature and assistance. And this would um, facilitate um, 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 validation of documents of payment, for example, between individuals and government agencies. Mm. I don't know if I don't know if it's mentioned here, but there's also an ID for suppliers. And that would be used in uh, re procurement between different government agencies. So, if the government, like a municipality, has to purchase uh, materials uh, for operations, they would uh, purchase these from suppliers using re procurement and they would make use of an EID. So, this is just a visualization of the type of um, communication between the individual and the government. And there would be a secure ID, and then the forms are sent digitally, and then there would be a opening up the, uh, the uh, mail from a digitally secure uh, mailbox. So the points on security are that each 
information should ensure confidentiality, that the information is only available to the parties who are supposed to have it, integrity, that the information is correct and complete, that hasn't been tampered with, and an accessibility that the information is available at the right time for the parties who need it. Okay, um, we'll continue with the segment, but we'll take a break first. And then, so you can ask them. Okay. 